welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the things that people don't tend to mention about egg recovery or eating disorder recovery and just sort of have a really honest open chat. Who knows specifically where this video is going to go, obviously I'm drawing on my own personal experience. If you don't know then I did recover from anorexia around two years ago I'd say I've been fully recovered more or less. I have done a video touching on my story before so be sure to go check out that video if you want a little bit more background. But I thought I would touch on some of the sort of really difficult things that I face, not so much to deter you from recovering if you currently are, but more as a point of kind of helping you to better prepare for if these moments arise, because often if you're prepared for something, you can deal with it a lot better at the time. And also if you are currently going through some of these things, then hopefully it'll help you feel like you're not alone. I guess one of the first things to mention is recovery is hard. There's no easy way around it. There's no easy journey. If there was, then everyone would be following this magical solution. It's challenging. There'll be days where you feel amazing and everything goes right and you feel like challenging yourself and you'll push your boundaries. There'll be other days where you still feel the immense guilt, where you feel like you've taken a step back and where you'll find everything 10 times harder. But that's okay. And it's those days that everything does go better where it reminds you why you're doing it. It reminds you why you should push through those harder days. Yes, <laughs> that is 10 times easier said than done, but I promise you there will be better days, but just be prepared that even if you're on an upward trend, you may have a bad day, you may have a slip up, and that's okay. The most important thing is you acknowledge it, you move past it, and you just keep trying to move forward. I'd say one of, kind of the hardest physical barriers, I guess, in a way that I had to personally get over, or that I found most taxing on my mental health, was dealing with kind of the digestive issue side of things. So I have done a whole video before about bloating and eating sort of recovery, I've touched on sort of gut health and eating disorders as well, and that massively impacted me. It was something that I found so challenging, especially when I was trying to actively gain weight and actively increase my food intake, that it, it made it so hard. It made me want to resort back to my old habits because I knew that if I restricted myself again, the bloating would go, the discomfort would go. However, I would never truly get past it if I went back. The only way to really overcome it and push forward and push past it would be to keep going. I remember I had days where I felt so bloated, so uncomfortable, had many breakdowns about it, and I'd be like, why me? Why do I have to go through this? Why is this a thing that I've done to myself, in a way? Why did I let myself get to this point where I'm now struggling this much and feeling this much pain and discomfort? And it was hard, it was really hard. Obviously as well, when you're suffering from some kind of eating disorder, you're likely to have poor body image, you're likely to really struggle with the aspect of gaining weight, you're likely to struggle with your changes in weight and your changes in appearance. So let alone just dealing with that, you've then also got this extra bloating and at times I felt like I looked pregnant and that on top of everything else just makes it 10 times harder to deal with. But again, reminding yourself that the only way to fully get past it is to keep pushing through if not it will never resolve it's kind of the key motivation to helping you push forward another kind of thing i guess this is more kind of from a mental point of view that i found really hard to deal with was trying to eat more when i'm around others so if i was with a friend all day if i was out somewhere all day and trying to kind of live more of a normal life I found it hard to acknowledge that I'd have to take loads of snacks with me, that I'd have to be prepared to have extra food, that if I was given a choice of sizes it would be the better option for me to go for the large but someone else went for the small or the medium option. And kind of accepting that fact that in that at that point in time I needed to eat more than others, which I gradually became okay with in myself, but as soon as I was eating around other people, I felt like I was being judged. I found it ten times harder to whip out an extra snack if I felt like I could eat something else or to order a bigger portion size or to ask for extra sides, whatever it may be. As soon as I was with someone else, even if they were a really close friend, I just felt like I was gonna be judged. And <laughs> to be honest, that was probably more of a belief in myself. One, if they are a good friend, they're not gonna judge you. 
Two, your close friends and family will probably just be happy to actually see you enjoying food to what an extent that you can. To see you trying to actively recover and to see you increasing your portion sizes. They're not going to judge you for doing it. They're probably going to celebrate your wins. However, that was something that massively weighed me down. And I know a lot of other people probably deal with those feelings of guilt or those feelings of being judged by others, making it 10 times harder to get the food in that you need to eat. However, just remember you're doing it for you. Even if there's going to be that one person that judges, you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for you. I guess kind of in regards to obviously a lot of people assume anorexia is a physical condition they think it's where you're really thin and you barely eat any food and therefore you have physical effects of it and you lose a lot of weight however anorexia isn't a physical condition it's a mental health issue and the physical effects of it so the weight loss the being stick thin the digestive issues everything else that comes along with it that physically happens is more of a side effect Yes, in recovery, to be physically healthy, you'll need to gain the weight, you'll need to eat more food, you may need to move your body less, whatever it may be specific to you that you need to do to recover. However, that's more to allow your body to recover from the physical damage you've caused. That's not so much recovering from the eating disorder itself. The eating disorder is a mental battle. It is a mental battle that you need to overcome. Yes, you may think you're gaining weight. Yes, you may think that your weight is stable and therefore you're on the road to recovery. However, if you don't try to undo the sort of negative thought patterns you have and behaviours around food, then you'll never actually fully recover and rebuild that positive, healthy relationship with food. You can gain weight, but not be recovered. You can try to restore physical health, but not be recovered. The main thing that you've got to try and overcome is that mental battle. It is those thought patterns. And it's hard, especially when you've been through it for years, even if you just had something for months. I mean, a lot of people tend to suffer from these things for years because you almost train your brain to think in a very certain way that it becomes easy to get stuck in that mindset. So therefore, trying to retrain your thought patterns, try to retrain your brain to not think about food, and exercise and anything else, your social anxiety that you may have developed, your mood that may have changed, trying to retrain your brain to kind of do the complete opposite of what you've been doing on a day-to-day -day basis for years, it takes time and it takes effort and it takes hard work. It is possible but it will be hard. So it's kind of a harsh truth, you, if you physically recover like I said, you're sort of part way to recovery. You've restored physical health, but until you mentally tackle the problem, those habits will still be there and you're likely to take a slip back. It's the most important thing to really try and work on in order to get to a point where you hopefully won't slip back into your old habits is working on your mindset and working on how you view food and your relationship with it and your relationship with yourself. The last kind of thing I'm gonna to touch on is the fact that it's weird in a way because obviously your eating disorder is kind of like that voice in your head. It makes you do a lot of things that you probably deep down don't really want to be doing. But at the same time, it becomes what you know. It becomes habit, it becomes your day-to-day -day life. And when you're first stepping into that recovery path, trying to separate yourself from your eating disorder is hard. And it can actually be really uncomfortable. It's almost like a part of you that even though you want to let go of it and you want to move past it, it's like separating yourself from another person in a way. I know I personally was a completely different person when I was affected by my eating disorder, both in my mood, in my personality, in just how I went about my day-to-day -day life. So it's almost like you're saying goodbye to an old version of yourself in a way and having to move past it and become this newer version of yourself, which personally I would say, having gone through something like that, whatever kind of mental battle it may be, whether it is an eating disorder or whether it's some other kind of other mental health issue, whenever you've been through something like that, when you manage to move past it, you will come out a different person, but you'll come out stronger for it. 
And so it can definitely be really uncomfortable trying to separate yourself from your eating disorder self and this new person you're becoming. And it's not sort of sad because you're kind of having to say goodbye to that version of yourself or to your eating disorder as such, but because it has become an ingrained part of you, it's just scary stepping into the unknown. It's scary stepping into things that are outside of your routine, that are outside of what you know, that are outside of your usual habits that you've been following for years because it's everything your ed's taught you that you need to believe in and that you need to be doing. And that is scary, it is scary to do. However, again, think about not so much what you're gonna be saying goodbye to, but think about what's waiting for you. What are you gonna gain back from it? What have you got to look forward to? And rather than focusing on the past, or maybe even your current self, start to focus on where you can aim for in the future and the person you could become. That is kind of everything I wanted to touch on in this video. I know it was just a little bit of a ramble. As I said, I just kind of wanted to have an open and honest chat about some of my personal struggles, some of the things you don't hear about a lot, and hopefully it's given you some kind of reassurance if you are going through it. Or like I said, hopefully it sort of prepared you for when those situations may arise if you currently are in the process of recovering or wanting to start to recover. If it has been helpful at all, then let me know by giving this video a big thumbs up. If you would like to see a part two or to hear more about my journey or if you even have any specific questions for me, be sure to leave a comment down below. You can also follow me over on Instagram. Feel free to DM me over there and I'll occasionally do Q&As on my stories as well. And if you do want to see more of my content, then be sure to go ahead and click on the little red subscribe button down below as well as be sure to tap on that notifications bell so you get notified whenever I upload and like I said I hope this video was of some help to you in some kind of way and yeah I'll be sure to see you very soon in a brand new video.